Family, when you confess and declare the Word of God, the Word of God is powerful to touch and change your life. The Word of God can never return back void. To you, it will do what God has set it out to do. I want to encourage you in everything that you do, every step that you take, wherever you go, be aware of God's presence. Remember, the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. He is called the comforter because he's here to comfort you, even in the situation that you are facing right now, the difficulties that we are going through right now, the COVID-19 that we are facing right now. The Holy Spirit is here to comfort us. This will bring me to our sermon topic for this morning, comfort in affliction. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Romans 8 verse 28. So we are all convinced that every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have been called to fulfill his designed purpose. The New King James says that everything works together for the good for those who are called according to his purpose. Those who love him. Can you see the importance of remaining in love with Jesus during this time? In difficult times, you can have confidence that God is busy working, turning everything around for your good. A matter of fact, God has got the ability to turn evil into good. And he does this quite often. The situation that we are facing right now, it's evil, it's bad. For us to go through all of this, you might even say, why am I going through this? Family, the question you should ask, is God with me? When God is with you, when the comforter is with you, he will see you through. Let's look at a situation of somebody that went through something that was unfair, that was unjust. Situation that was evil, that God turned around for good. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Genesis chapter 37 verse 22. And Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, but cast him into the spit, which is in the wilderness, and do not lay a hand on him, that he might deliver him out of their hands and bring him back to his father. So it came to pass when Joseph had come to his brothers that they stripped Joseph from his tunic, the tunic of many colors that was on him. Then they took him and cast him into a pit, and the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat a meal. Then they lifted their eyes and looked. And there was a company of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead with their camels bearing spices, balm, and myrrh on their way to carry them down to Egypt. So Judah said to his brothers, What profit is there if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come and let us sell him to the Ishmaelites. And let not our hand be upon him. For he is our brother and our flesh, and his brothers listened. Family, God often brings good out of evil. What Joseph's brothers did was evil, was wicked. To take him, to want to kill him. They were jealous of him. What they did was wrong. They sinned. Even when there's sin, when somebody has sinned against you, wronged you. God can turn it around for good. Remember, what Joseph had to go through was a time of preparation, but in that, God preserved him. Remember, there was three phases. Joseph found himself in the pit. He found himself as a slave. And then he found himself in prison. Those things are not just. It's evil what happened to him. But in that, God was in control of his life. It was in the dry pit. Maybe you found yourself in a situation where your brothers threw you in a pit. Remember, the Bible says the pit was dry. There was no water in it. If there was water in it, Joseph would have drowned. So even in that, God was preserving him and keeping him. God was with him. When they were planning to kill him, the next thing when they lifted up their eyes, they saw the people, the Ishmaelites coming, and he was sold as a slave. God used that situation to reveal his purpose and his plans in Joseph's life. What we are going through right now, the situation, 
don't see it as an obstacle, but it becomes the way for God to reveal His plans and purposes in our lives. Family, what a God we have to worship. What a son we have to praise. What a future is planned for us. God has not changed his mind. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Thoughts and plans for welfare and peace, and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Family, God wants to give you hope in your final outcome. He knows the thoughts that he has towards you. He's not changed that. Remember, he gave Joseph a dream. He showed him what he had planned for him. From the beginning, he was designed by divine destiny, predestined to be a leader that will impact and influence a whole nation, save a whole nation. God was preparing him to be an instrument of deliverance, to take him from where he is to where God wanted him to be. Joseph could have very easily said, what have I done wrong? What have I done to deserve this? But he knew that God was in control of his life. Remember Romans 8, everything work out for the good for those who love him. It's called according to his purpose and his plans. Don't change your purpose, your plans. Don't let go of that dream that God has given you. God will comfort you in this time. He is our comforter in the difficulties that you are facing right now. God will be your comforter to encourage you. If you're finding yourself in a pit, remind yourself where you belong. Remind yourself what God has planned for you. And you will see that God will comfort you in that situation. It's that dream. It's that vision that will impart strength on you to go on. Don't let go of your dream. Right there where you are sitting, where you are listening to this message, say to yourself, I'm not going to let go of my dream. The dream that you have, that God has given you, that dream, that purpose becomes a prophetic message. It's a prophetic picture. Remember, God will always give you a prophetic picture of your good future so that you can hold on to it. Joseph could have said exactly the same. Why am I going through all of this? I don't deserve this. It's wrong. And I agree it was wrong. But in that, God was holding Joseph's life in his hands, revealing his purpose and his plans. What we are facing right now, don't lose focus of your dream. Hold on to that prophetic picture. That prophetic picture is to encourage you. It's to strengthen you. It is to help you not to give up, to know that God is faithful. It's that prophetic picture that will strengthen you. In a time like this, fear can grip your heart so easy. This is the thing that's been coming against people more than anything when I counsel people, when I talk to people, it is fear gripping their hearts. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 40. And I want to read from verse 10. The Bible says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Family, I want to encourage you. Continue in God's righteousness because it's His righteous right hand that will uphold you. He says, fear not. Fear not. Do not be dismayed because I'm going to help you. I'm going to strengthen you. Fear is more deceptive than Satan himself. Fear paralyzes you. Fear steers you in a direction where you should not go. Don't let fear grip your heart. When the Bible says, fear not, it's another way of saying have faith. Remember, it is David in Psalm 23 that says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. The Amplified says, I will fear and dread no evil. Sometimes we find ourselves walking through the valley of the shadow of death. It's a dark place. It's a scary place. But God is with you. Sometimes we find ourselves going into the fiery furnace. But it's God, the fourth person, that will be with you. Sometimes we find ourselves going into the lion's den. But it's the Lord sending his angel to close the mouths of those lions 
that it will not hurt you, not harm you in any way. This has been one of the toughest situations that we are facing, an affliction that's come upon us. But I want to assure you, find comfort in the Holy Spirit to comfort you in your affliction. It was in the pit that Joseph reminded himself, I know where I belong. It was in the prison, him doing good, helping people, giving them instruction in righteousness, revealing their dreams to them, their purposes to them, and saying, please don't forget me. Where they forgot about him, Joseph could have become bitter because they disappointed him, didn't help him, but he didn't. He remained focused upon that prophetic picture, that dream that God had given him. Family, in what we are facing right now, the question that you should ask yourself is not why am I going through this? Why is this happening? You should not be saying this is unfair. The question you should be asking is the Lord with me? When the Lord is with you, he will comfort you. When the Lord is with you, who can come against you? Sometimes we go through the fiery furnace, but God will be with us. Sometimes we face a lion. Sometimes we face a giant. doesn't matter what it is. God will show you that prophetic picture of your good future. Not the future you fear, but the future that you hope for. The future that you desire. God has not changed his mind in any way, but he will perfect everything concerning you. In this future that God wants to give you that you are hoping for, what are you saying about that future? What are the words that you are declaring? Because remember, negative words produces unbelief and fear, but positive words will produce faith and hope in your heart so that you can face your future. We have to be aware of the fact that the Jesus that lives on the inside of us is an overcomer. He overcame death. It's a victorious spirit that will take you from where you are to where God wants you to be. It doesn't matter how long the season will be. The Holy Spirit will be with you in it and through it. It is this prophetic picture that strengthened Joseph on the inside, that helped him. The Holy Spirit could remind him, comfort him, say that I've called you, I've predestined you to be a leader. I've predestined you to be in a position of authority where others will honor you. But he had to go through that whole season so that God could mature him, so that God could strengthen him. It is the prophetic picture that gives us strength to endure our current situation. You have to remind yourself, God has not changed his mind concerning you. Family, as a Christian, don't ever say you don't know your future. You know what God has planned for you. He has given you that prophetic picture. Let's go to the book of James chapter 5, verse 11. Indeed, we count them blessed who endure. You've heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Can you see here? James saying we know the end intended by the Lord. The things that the Lord planned for Job was to bring restoration into his life. And if you read Job chapter 42, you'll see the Lord restored back to him Double. Whatever he lost, God restored back to him double. When I read the Bible, I see that's the minimum restoration. So I want to encourage you. Your situation, your difficulty, your challenges has become the way. God can turn it around for good. Continue to remain in love with the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to stay focused on his plans and his purposes for your life. And you'll see God will bring restoration in every area of your life. We should have an attitude to come to God in humility and say, Precious Father, in the same way you comforted Joseph in his situation, comfort me. In the same way you gave Joseph a prophetic picture of his good future, give me a prophetic picture that you can hold on to it. It is that 
picture that will impart strength on the inside of you. Your prayer should be not just to see that picture, but as Joseph walked in it, ask the Holy Spirit to help you not only to see it, but to work in you and through you so that you can fulfill that purpose. Remember, all of this that Joseph went through was to impart strength in him, was to mature him, was to help him. God used his situation to advance his course. Ask God, use my current situation, this COVID-19. Use it, O Lord, to advance my cause. And you'll see what God will do in and through your life, family. Don't allow your challenges to mislead you because God is busy perfecting everything concerning you. This, it seems like evil. God can turn it around for good. Turn with me in your Bibles to Genesis 45. And I'm reading from verse 5. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. It was not a setback. It was a setup. God was in control of his life to preserve life. God used Joseph as an instrument of deliverance. In this time when he went through, God was training him, teaching him. God can oftentimes use foolish things to help us with mind management, self-management, human management, resource management, and self-control. God was busy bringing maturity into his life by faith. Romans teaches us that we glory in tribulation. You need maturity to get to that place. You need faith to get to that place. You need to understand your purpose and be in love with Jesus to be able to say, we glory in tribulation. God had to take him through that whole process to use him as an instrument of righteousness, an instrument of deliverance, an instrument of hope. An instrument that God used to save a whole nation. God has not changed his plans and his purposes concerning you. God uses these foolish things to preserve us, to keep us, to prepare us for promotion. God can use any situation. The situation that you are facing, that's evil. God can turn it around for good. What are you confessing and saying about your situation? The secret to Joseph's life is that he knew that there was more to life than his situation. There was something more important than what he was going through. He didn't allow his situation to mislead him. He didn't allow his situation to become bitter. He didn't allow his situation to bring him to a place to lose focus, but he knew there was something greater than his situation. The dream that God had given him, the purpose that God had given him, the calling that God had placed upon his life. By divine appointment, he was called to be a leader, to bring deliverance, to bring hope, to be an instrument of salvation to many people. Ask yourself, what is my pit? In your pit, don't ask yourself, why do I find myself in a pit, ask yourself, where is my dream? When you find yourself in a pit, remind yourself, I know where I belong. I know where I belong. And that prophetic picture will impart strength into your life. And you'll see that that which looked like evil and what Joseph's brothers did It was evil to throw him in a pit, to sell him off. They had planned to kill him. That's evil. But that which seems like evil, God turned it around for good. You are in God's hands. God is in control of your life and he's not changed his thoughts concerning you. God wants to strengthen you. God wants to revive you. And God wants to empower you so that you can finish strong and still fulfill your purpose. Don't let fear grip your heart. I want to close by reading a special part from the book of Psalm chapter 80, verse 17. Listen what the Bible says. Let your hand be upon the man. 
of your right hand. Family, listen to me. You've been called by God. You are seated in heavenly places. You are born from above. That victorious spirit is on the inside of you. It says in verse 17, Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, upon the Son of Man whom you made strong for yourself. I want to encourage you. Expect God to make you strong in this time, in this season. Allow Him to be your strength. Allow Him to be your shield. Allow Him to be your exceedingly great reward. Allow the Holy Spirit to be your comforter, to comfort you in this time. Verse 18, Then we will not turn back from you. Revive us, and we will call upon your name. Restore us. O Lord God of hosts, cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. God restored, God revived Joseph and he wants to do the same for you. There is something far more important than the situation that we are facing right now. That is our dream. That is our purpose. Why God has placed us here. It's given us the ministry of reconciliation to reconcile people to Jesus Christ. When we experience Jesus Christ on the inside, we are revived. We are restored. Things in your life will start to change. The situation that you are facing, you'll know even in that situation, God is there to comfort you, to help you, to take us from where we are to where he wants us to be because he's not changed his mind concerning us as he was busy perfecting everything in Joseph's life to take him from the pit to the palace. In between, there were challenges, but he never lost the heart. Every time he found himself in the pit, he looked at that prophetic picture and he said, I know where I belong. When he was a slave in bondage, he said, I know where I belong. I know the plans and the purpose of God for my life. He found himself in prison, said, I know where I belong. And it was that prophetic picture that comforted him, the Holy Spirit that comforted him in that situation. Family, God is ready to revive you. God is ready to give you that good future that you are hoping for. The question that you should ask yourself, is God with me? Ask yourself, where is my dream? Am I still holding on to that dream, the purpose, the plan that God has got for my life? Selah. Precious Father, we want to pray for your people right now. Grant unto them, once again, a prophetic picture of the good future that you have planned for them. Not only to see it, Lord, but Lord, to work in them and through them so that they can walk in it and your name be glorified in them and through them in Jesus' mighty name. Strengthen them in their inner man in this season, O Lord, to be able to endure this time, to get to a place of maturity, Lord, But we can say, as Paul said, that we glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope, and that the hope of God does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon your people right now and fill them with your love until it overflows to others. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We ask, revive us. Restore, O Lord, into every person's life. In Jesus' mighty name, as we submit, commit, and dedicate families unto you, we ask, Master Jesus, perfect, do good in every person's life. Those that are committed to your purpose and your plans, Stretch forth your mighty right hand. Cause the light of your favor to shine upon all their ways. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, every person listening right now, we want to command your light into their lives. For in your light, there's life. Bring healing, health, and strength to every household, Lord. Even in this winter season, let your blood speak. Let your mercy speak. Let your healing speak. In Jesus' mighty name, as we pray the blood of Jesus over every person, O Lord, be their shield, their protection, their exceedingly great reward. In Jesus' mighty name, stir up 
the spirit of every person on the inside that they may speak the oracles of God let them start to declare the good future that you have planned for them oh father and we thank you for that in Jesus mighty name right now Lord we leave your peace with every person in Jesus mighty name the peace that surpasses all understanding all reasoning father the peace that comes from your throne room from heaven in Jesus mighty name let heaven rule in every heart oh father in Jesus mighty name to impart the power that comes from your throne room into your people's lives Lord as we receive from your throne room everything that's good everything that's pure everything that's holy everything that builds up everything that encourages everything that strengthens everything that glorifies your wonderful name we thank you for that we bless you for that in Jesus mighty name we pray amen and amen family I want to encourage you that there's comfort in affliction because Jesus Christ is with us the Holy Spirit the comforter is with you be aware of his presence and you'll experience him comforting you in everything that you do go out this week and go and encourage a few people share this message with them that they have a friend in the Holy Spirit that's there to comfort them a friend in the Holy Spirit that's there to dispose of all giants to make our way straight and smooth even in this difficult time God will be with us as David said though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death though I walk through the valley of COVID-19 the Lord is with me I will fear no evil I will dread no evil because the Lord is with you leading you in your purpose and the plans that he's got for you Amen. Let me declare a blessing over you. Raise your hands to heaven. Father, right now we bless your people with every blessing that's in Christ Jesus. And we declare, Lord, that only your goodness and your mercy will follow them all the days of their lives. May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.